Hey, welcome to the Sustainable Housing Tour. This happened September 2012 throughout Armidale. Nine houses were open to the public. Here are two of them. Mahela was the architect for a house that was built in 2008 and she will show you the range of features of that house. And then secondly, Jock will take you through an older house and show you how to retrofit to lessen your environmental impact. Enjoy. Okay, so it has built 2008, it's all fully insulated, so um, we've got Styrofoam under the slab, R25 in the walls and R35 in the ceilings. It's all double glazed and maybe I'll talk about these windows actually now. Um, so these are what we call composite windows. So you've got powder coated aluminium on the outside but timber on the inside. The problem with metal windows is they have a thermal, they don't have a thermal break so metal is a great conductor of heat so you're losing all your heat through the metal. That's not an issue with timber windows. But the compromise here is we've got no maintenance on the outside and then we've got these very sexy timber windows on the inside and there's no thermal transfer. So, and plus the windows themselves are all fully double glazed. And that's right throughout the house, except in bathrooms and, and toilets, etc. The windows up here, um, the fixed windows again are double glazed, but the louvers at the time it wasn't possible to get double glazing for louvers, so they're actually Comfort Plus, which is a very thick laminated glass, so it's doing the next best thing. Plus the rubber seals around them are quite efficient, and you can open those during the summer to let the breeze through. Particularly if you've got this window open and that one, you're going to get cross ventilation. And then the ceiling fan basically will push the heat down in winter and draw the heat up in summer so it encourages that air movement. Mm -hmm. So we'll go and have a look at the heating. So on the roof you'll see when we go outside that we actually have two sets of evacuated tubes. If you've been to Brown Street or going to Brown Street you'll get uh, someone there will explain to you how the evacuated tubes work. So the hot water comes down, okay, the hot water is heated by the sun and heats up the hot water in this tank. Now if this was just a house for hot water, so for showers and kitchen etc, one set of tubes, which is about 30 tubes plus this size tank, is adequate. The reason we've got the two sets of tubes is because we're also doing our heating. So you would have noticed the heaters on the walls in the other rooms. Mm. So inside this tank there's a second coil which has a separate set of water because the water that's circulating around in the heaters is cooling down much faster. So we've got the extra set of tubes to help boost it, but there's also a gas tank, a gas booster to help heat that as well. Um, in case it really does cool down um, now, as well as having the heaters. Um, the fact that the tank is inside, it's not outside in the minus 10, doesn't have to work quite as hard because it's insulated, it's inside. Shut this door, this space gets quite warm. So you can hang your clothes in here as well. So you've got a drying airing cupboard as well. So as well as these heaters throughout the house, the one that's in the bathroom then doubles as the towel rail. So you have a heated towel rail but no extra cost to do so. This is what we call a poor man's ensuite. So you've got the ensuite, but it's also actually the main bathroom off the house. But because a bathroom is a high ventilation area, so you have your window open while you're having a shower to stop the buildup of condensation, you close these two doors and you're heating this area. Because they've got door seals on them, you're not, you're not drawing that heat into that cold, unheated space. Um, this is $10 from Bunnings or Kmart, and a huge difference, very, very efficient. Then we have the curtains. So these curtains, we've got the, the double layer, so you've got the air gap between plus the rubber, plus we've got the double glazed windows, plus they've got the shade blind. So as a whole package, as a whole system, this is an incredibly efficient system. We've also got the pelmet to stop the heat loss up through there, and technically the curtains should actually just touch the ground to stop in any heat loss underneath. But as a whole system package, it's very, very efficient. However, it only works with behaviour. If you don't close them, they're not going to work. So someone's got to be here to close and open curtains to make it really, really efficient. Um, so you saw where the bathroom was and then the hot water and there's another toilet next to that. Mm -hmm. We've also then got the laundry in the cupboard. Um, and obviously if this was a house with five kids, that's not big enough, but for this house that's plenty. Plus the kitchen. So because we've got all the plumbing co-located, the hot water is not travelling anywhere near as far, you're not losing heat, and you've got less risk of burst pipes, etc. So it's a much more efficient use of your plumbing. Mm -hmm. Now we can go outside. We've also got two kilowatts of PVs, and because there's no electric heating, there's no electric hot water, they're basically net exporters of electricity. When the house was built, it was all compact fluoros because the LEDs technology was not really around, but now it is. If we rebuilt this house now, we put the LEDs in, which again would reduce their electricity demand even more. Mm. But there's no compromise on, you know, it's all the mod cons. It's got dishwasher and television and computers and, you know, auto garage doors. So there's no compromise on lifestyle. It's still a quite modern house that has all those demands but it's so efficient it's reducing the energy demand.
So we've got approximately 8,000 plus litres of rainwater storage. Now the reason we've got these skinny little tanks is purely an issue of space because this is a very compact site so we could have actually put bigger rounder tanks in and for cheaper costs for more storage but there was nowhere to put them. Um, and partly that's because the house is skew if on the block even though it's such a tiny block and the reason it's skew if is so we're trying to maximise facing True North. True North is about 7 degrees west of sorry, 11 degrees west of Magnetic North, and Magnetic North is basically out to Mount Duval in Armadale. So going as close as we can to True North will maximise all the solar benefits. All these tanks are equalised with a pump, um, so rather than one tank filling up and the others being half empty, they will always have the same level across the board. They have mains back up, so when they get down to a certain level, the mains tank will kick in, mains power will kick in, mains water will kick in and bring it back up only to a small level and that will keep doing that until the rainwater brings it back up to full again. Um, they are plumbed, there's the little tank plump, pump room is at the end of the bathroom there and you can see the pipes coming out of the ground so they're plumbed in to do all the irrigation, flush both toilets, um, the washing machine and the kitchen sink and, and there's another two tanks around the front as well. Now this, this house was actually built by my maternal grandparents in 1926, uh, sold out of the family in 1954. But we do have an existing photo from 1931, um, what the house looked like then. Really hasn't changed if you look at the front of it. Brown Street is all dirt obviously, um, and there's a few less trees around, but that's, uh, that's actually a pretty good one to have, I like that one. What we'll try and point out is what we've done to the house to improve it electrically and thermally. Um, when we first bought the house, 2006, we dropped the hot water usage, the power for hot water usage, right down. Um, at the same time, we're still we're driving these efficiencies down here. There were 15 downlights in this room alone. Downlight draws 50 watts. 15, no, 50 is 450 watts. You leave them on for an hour, that's half a kilowatt of power. Um, so by getting it down to two fluoros, you know, that use eight watts each uh, now. You can drive a lot of efficiency. So that's what was, we're driving all this the electrical efficiency here. This is when we started putting the PVs on, um, and that's that's a total usage and, and production. We had a, a, a peak here. Mahala, my wife, actually ran. Um, she still runs her office here, but she was doing the schools projects, and they had four people working here, so that there was a big office running. What you can see is the trend over between 2006 and 10, four years, dropping the power usage right down. So we're down now. Look, we average. 2012, 7.8 kilowatts a day uh, for a house like this. Standard appliance right through it. The only thing we don't have is a clothes dryer. You know, washing machine, dishwasher, freezer, fridge, all of that sort of stuff, it's all just standard. Um, so you can get even these old houses to be quite efficient. Um, hot water is a big one, uh, and then looking at your lights is the next thing. Buy efficient appliances wherever you can. So that's the power side of it. The thermal side of it, heating and cooling. Um, this is when we bought the house, this is coming to more to now. Um, outside minimum temperatures, red line outside maximum temperatures. Blue line inside minimum temperatures, black line inside maximum temperatures. So we monitor the, the temperature in the house. When we first bought it, you can see the differential between, in, you know, between day and night in the house. Um, yes, it would heat up and then it would drop all that heat at night. Um, so we were using a lot of heating just to bring that back up. Uh, Regularly get the house regularly got well over 25, you know, 27, 28 degrees on a hot day inside, uh, and regularly dropped down to 13 degrees at night. Um, so what we've been trying to do is make that more efficient. Uh, we've done that with through insulation under the floor, wherever the, there's just wooden floors, insulation in the ceiling, 3.5 bats straight over the top of the existing insulation that was there. It's about R5 in equivalent value now double glazing, um, you know, sealing, wherever we're not using a room, you know, seal it off, we're not heating in there, there's no heat escaping into there, so. Um, some of it's big efficiencies, some of it's behaviour. Wander through this way. This totally internal room, it would be really, really dark. Um, just one little solar tube, you know, and it makes it you can utilise the room. You may not be able to you know, read music if you're playing the piano, but um, you know, it makes it not such a dark, dingy room. 
this house was really dark and dingy. Yeah. <laughs> so just doing that sort of thing really does help. What we've found is we get more and more efficient when we're just looking at maybe smaller problems. We reckon we're losing a lot of heat through this door um, and really quite hard to, uh, to double glaze this sort of this stained glass because there's so many small panels. We did get a quote for this, it was about $3,000 to double glaze it. So this last winter we decided that we'd give that a go. Um, you can't quantify the difference. Uh, there's some nights when we expect the house to drop another degree and it hasn't, so... Am oh, I word perfect yet? <laughs> <laughs> These windows were broken in the hailstorm, they were smashed with the hailstones, this and the bay window on the other side. Um, so they had to come out and be repaired, all these stained glass windows in these bays. While they were out, uh, the guy suggested we put a sheet of glass on the outside of the stained glass just to protect them. Um, what we did was actually rebate the windows back in a bit more, there's plenty of timber in there, slide the stained glass back a bit further, left an air gap and then put the, another, the next lot of glass in. So it's a fully double glazed window in an 80 year old stainless, you know, mm. stained glass. Um, you can't even tell. No. Um, what you have got to be careful is wherever there's, there's lead like that, it's just dragging the heat out of the room. So his suggestion was just put the glass straight against it and we would just be losing the heat still. So having the air gap in there makes it fully insulated and obviously it protects the outside of the window. Mm. So another one is just a behavioural thing. All, we didn't put the, um, the gas central heating in, but all the vents basically put under the windows, um, mostly because that's where there's no furniture, so it's easy to do. Um, we found that, close the curtains, curtains are actually billowing out like this because all the hot air was going straight up behind them and straight out the window. So, it's just a behaviour thing, it doesn't cost anything. In winter, that just <laughs> fires the hot air out in the middle of the room. We owned a Nard for a long time, it's a big house with only one bathroom, what we could do could we get an ensuite in here? You know, should we take that window out and build something out there? Really, we didn't want to do that. We didn't know what we were going to do. Um, thought about it for a fair while, and this was our solution here. So most most people think it's a cupboard. Yeah. It's actually an ensuite, and it works really well. And you got a loo there too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Most hey, you can do both at the same time. Well, you could if you want to, but not quite. Um, you know, most people with a shower, the, the first, you turn the shower on, it runs cold water. And we just drop the shower head into the bucket, let it fill up about half a bucket before it's hot, um, and then use it. It's right next to the loo, so we use the bucket of water to flush the loo. Um, it's it's a, just a little thing. Um, it might save us a few cents. Uh, certainly doesn't cost us anything. Putting soapy water down the loo once a day, so it cleans it. Mm -hmm.